Estate Radio. I'm Shannon Register, and you can call us anytime with your real estate question here at the studio. That number is 281-882-8088. We'll be happy to answer your real estate questions right here on the air every Sunday here on Houston Real Estate Radio. That number again is 281-882-8088. If you're on social media, you can also tweet us your questions using hashtag HRER. We're excited today to be talking about the holidays, holiday staging tips. With the upcoming holidays, you want to make sure that your house looks simple, clean, nice and elegant for those buyers that are coming in, but you still want to be able to celebrate with your family. That's always really important. So I've got the creator of home staging here with me. Joining me is Barb Schwartz. She is Skyping in today from Seattle, Washington. If you miss any of today's show, you can always find it on our website at HoustonRealEstateRadio.com. We have videos, so if you're driving, you can always uh, go online and find the video and watch it so you don't have to take any notes or try to remember a website or anything like that. Right, Barb? Absolutely. All right, so let's talk about some holiday staging tips. You know, it is harder to sell your home during the holidays because, you know, you want it to, you still want to be able to spend the holidays with family and decorate, but sometimes people over-decorate, and just because you own it doesn't mean you have to show it, right? Absolutely. And uh, making it much more simple is the key. Less is more. And focus on the front door and then focus on the dining room table, which you have in the middle, the coffee table, what you set there, and then it's fine to have a Christmas tree. It's just where you put it. Look at do's and don'ts and have a great time doing it and still celebrate. Sounds good. All right. Well, let's let's talk about over decorating. We we don't want to do that. With looking at buyers coming in, you really have to be careful because they'll be looking at all those decorations and not the space, right? Absolutely. You don't want to sell your decorations. You want to sell your house. So and how, how do you decide how to how to narrow that down? How to just put out the perfect stuff? How do you make that decision when you've got all these things you can use every year for Christmas? Do you do you go by themes or? What do you think? Well, well, we all have a lot of things usually and think, okay, I'm selling my house, so I'm not going to overkill. I'm not going to do way too much. And by focusing on the areas that I named, then you just don't put a bow on every single thing in every room. And it, it, it's just keeping the room spacious so that buyers appreciate the space and not having too much, no matter what holiday it is. And what we don't want to do is have somebody walk in a door and be overwhelmed by, say, a garland that's on a wrought iron railing going upstairs, especially when it's way, way too much. And so I have ideas that people have done on my Pinterest boards for staging for the holidays. Uh, All they have to do is go to Pinterest to Barb Schwarz or... Some of the images come from Google Images, and credit is given there as well as on Pinterest, whoever did it. So what do you think about the the keeping it simple and clean um, for the garland on the staircase? Should you do nothing, or should you just do very simple? What do you think? Well, simple is really, really best. And, you know, we see houses that are on the market that have these monstrous-sized garlands, and then they have a bow like every six inches, and they've got balls hanging down at the same time, and it's just way, way too much. So just having a simple garland of nature on a staircase without having 25 bows makes it look really clean, and and then people are not just staring at the garland. They're looking at the stairs. I like that. All right, so just keep it simple. I like the the tips you said. Do the dining room table, the coffee table, just certain areas. On the tree, do you recommend those pencil trees? Are those still going to be popular this year? Are we going back with the fat, heavy trees? What what are we looking at for this Christmas season? Well, that's an excellent question, and my answer is it depends on how much space you have because some homes in the living room where they traditionally put the tree, it could be in the family room as well, But there's just not enough room for a really, really, really wide tree. So go to the, you know, much more narrow tree. Where you have the room to have a larger tree, it's okay. It's just not too big so that the room feels overcrowded. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, there are examples where people put bows on top of pictures. They have bookcases that have got a wreath tied in front and more jingle bells. And, you it's know, too much. It's just way too much. Too and much. if mm -hmm. you put the tree in front of the window and you have a nice backyard or a view, then people aren't going to see the view and that's what you're selling. So traditionally, I like to see in the tree in the corner of a room. Okay, Barb, I'm going to ask you a personal question here. When you put up your Christmas tree, do you stage the packages or do you put your real packages under the tree? Stage the packages. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Stage so do you, think, do you think there are a lot of people out there who actually do that? Well, for selling, you really need to do that. And also for living, it gives a nice theme. So, for example, you know, grocery sacks, cut them open and turn them inside, or the packing paper that we ship packages mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. I love that. And then you could use raffia, for example, for the bows and the ties. But what we don't want are all these different colored papers mm -hmm. with Santa Clauses and Jingle Bells all over, them, all over them. And all these patterns are conflicting with each other. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, stage the tree, less is more. Be natural. Faux is fine as long as it looks natural. Use the size of tree for the width that you have to put it in. The corner is the best, as I said. And then stage the packages is underneath. So the corner is the best, but sometimes people, well, a lot of times people want to put it in front of the window where you can see the lights at night. So what do you recommend in that case? Still put it in front of the window or stick it in the corner? Stick it in the corner because we want to sell the window. And, you know, now when you move, then you can put it anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. oh, for, for staging purposes, put it in the right. corner. Okay. Right. All right. Now, do you think that the tr the traditional Christmas tree is always the way to go, or can you do a different type of tree, something more natural? You can you can do a different type of tree. Say, put it on a table. It doesn't have to be on the floor. It could be a smaller tree. It could be one that you put in a galvanized bucket that sits on the table. Mm -hmm. It could be you, you know even sticks that go in a vase that you hang ornaments on. So it's all about how much room you have and being creative, and it doesn't always have to be the traditional tree. Now, what about the top of the Christmas tree? What should you put at the top? A bow, a star, an angel? What do you think for staging well, purposes? You know, for staging, I think what you said is really good. A bow is great as long as it doesn't overwhelm the whole tree, and a star is really great. Those are both, you know, really appropriate. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with an angel. It, it's just that keeping it more, you know, traditional for every kind of person that comes through the front door. Because p different people have different faiths, and you right. want to apply to all of them. Because mm -hmm. you want to make the money. Yes, the right. So tell us about using twigs, though, because you have also said that we don't have to have a Christmas tree. We could use uh, just a smaller a smaller version of a Christmas tree or bring in something from the outside and um, I've seen pictures where you even use twigs tell me about that right you can use any kind of container you know get out of the box look around your house it could actually be a big box that you have that you know that's made with cloth around it or it could be as I said a galvanized container it, it, it could be a pitcher you know that you pour water from a nice size one it could be glass and then you find twigs in your yard that you really like and some that would, you know, be straight and some that would be curved and put them in the vase or the container and then it's okay to tie a few bows on them and then hang ornaments and have a theme with your ornaments. Always yeah. make a themed Christmas tree, always make it a theme yeah. with the ornaments. Right, and just don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. And that looks really nice too. Doesn't have to be the traditional. Now, some people like the um, like the hand blown ornaments. If you're going to go that route, like the Christopher Radko ornaments, should you do only Christopher Radko ornaments, or should you go with certain colors? How do you organize those? Well, depending on the main color scheme of your room, let's say that you have red toss pillows and a red throw and a red chair. You could always do different kinds of red. Christmas tree ornaments mm -hmm. to put in a bowl and uh, you can add greenery or you could add twigs again. I really like the theme of all silver or all gold or mixing the both because that goes with everything and that can be in a shallow dish or it could be in a big vase. Just have fun with it with different containers. It could be in the middle of the 
dining room table or it could be on the coffee table or it could be on a table that you use it as we said like a Christmas tree. Real quickly, Barb, tell us some ideas for things to fill up uh, vases and containers with to decorate, like on the dining room table, different places to decorate throughout the home. What are some ideas for things you can put in the containers? Well, I love fruit, never bananas, but like green apples. Okay. And, and they could be faux or real, and those can go in all kinds of containers. I do like something in the bottom. It could be the glass ball, uh, beads. It could be, you know, dried lentils. I, I mean, it could be kidney beans. It, it could be Epsom salts. You know, people never know. I like that because that looks like snow. So I like the Epsom yeah, salts. Exactly. And this is really inexpensive and you can buy it at the grocery store. Uh-huh. And great filler for the bottom, you know, of the vase. And then you're putting the things in that. The Christmas ornaments well, or something on top of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And there's no limit. I mean, really, no limit. You could have rice, like basmati rice that's uh, a lighter brown, or it could be white rice. I mean, just think out of the box and look around and see what you have in your pantry that you could use as a filler. You don't have to buy anything. It's not about spending money. It's about having fun and being creative. I love it, Barb. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, Lots of great staging for the holiday ideas here on Houston Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. Hey, I have a question for you. Just how hot is your garage in the summer? Yep, thought so. Hot. Hot. And even hotter, right? So what if I told you that there's a product that can now help keep your garage cool? Introducing Windy Vent, a revolutionary passive garage ventilation system that works off thermal airflow to allow free airflow in during hot summer months and can be closed to keep the cold out in the winter. Windy vents are sold in pairs and install in as little as 30 minutes. Get your revolutionary windy vents today and say no to your hot garage. You don't have to leave your garage door up to cool your garage anymore. Vent it 24-7 with windy vents. To get yours now, go to windyvent.com. Get 10% off your order. Just enter the word Shannon as your coupon code. Don't wait. Go to windyvent.com. Windyvent.com. That's two E's. WindyVent.com. Installation not included. See WindyVent.com for certified installers and for more information. Restrictions may apply. See website for details. 